Hey guys, what happens when a not-so-great DM decides to be a not-so-great player? A headache. A headache is what you get. So years ago, I was part of this RP group that decided to try our hands at TTRPGs. There was myself, my now-girlfriend, Drick, who was a creep, Aaron, who was a chill guy that just got wrapped up in madness, and my friend at the time, Alana. Alana was the GM, and she wasn't very good at it. She chose to use Pathfinder because it had more options, and more options in her eyes equaled better. But she didn't read up on the rules for those extra options, and she had a very railroaded style of storytelling. Notably, was the time when she told me that I wasn't keeping up with the damage output, so I needed to change classes. Now, dear listener, I was the healing support. Another favorite was the time when she tried building a boss, only to forget a stat, and thus our fighter was able to just sit on the boss for ten turns, until the BBG smited the boss because Alana was pissed that we didn't take the fight seriously. I could make an entirely different post about that campaign, but this is just for context. After finally getting through the campaign, Alana gave a big speech about how tired she was on DMing. She was frustrated that we ruined her campaign, and she was retiring her homebrew setting because she didn't feel appreciated. And if we wanted to game, then someone else had to DM. Okay, said my girlfriend. I can DM next if people would like to keep playing. Most of us were pretty gung-ho about this, and I was excited because my girlfriend was DMing. She's a great DM. This is going to be great. So, everyone started brainstorming their characters, and at the end of the month, we were set to start our next campaign, in a homebrew setting using 5e, which was a completely different rule set, completely different character sheets, but it was such a relief after the clustered mess that was our previous character sheets that Alana insisted that we used. Naturally, Alana hated it. She wanted us to plead with her to DM again, but everyone else was as burnt out with her DM style as she was as the DM. But if she didn't want to be left out, she had to play the game. So she did. I, being a stupid fool, ignored the red flags being thrown in my face. In private, I had talked to Alana about what character she had wanted to play because I was curious to know if we could link our backstory for some extra drama. She revealed that she wanted to play a Nereid druid who had been an NPC in her campaign. I was confused as to why she would want to recycle a character, but whatever. My girlfriend said it was going to be a campaign based on an island nation, and Alana wanted to play a water character. My girlfriend even went out of her way to homebrew a player race for Alana so she could play a Nereid instead of a water genasi or triton. Instead of thanking my girlfriend, she instead grumbled about the lack of options in 5e and how limited the skill customization was. At this point, I was starting to see the red, but trying to be optimistic. So there we were. Session 1. Our characters were all trying to board a ship to get to the island that would be the primary setting. Aaron's character, a ratkin ranger, was the first mate of the ship. Drick's character, a halfling sorcerer, bought passage on the ship. My drow rogue had been denied a ticket, so they snuck on board and tried hiding among the other passengers. After setting sail, Aaron was about to bust my character as a stowaway. Tension was high, and drama was kicking up. And then the ship was attacked and destroyed as a kraken rose from the depths, our characters being the only survivors. And then, cue Alana's character intro. She comes in, the daughter of a powerful water person thing. She sees the flotsam from the ship, and she discovers the other PCs floating unconscious in the water. My girlfriend had set her up so that she could be the savior for the other PCs, which is how the Nereid had been introduced in the previous campaign. It was a nice callback, or rather, it would have been 
if the Nereid hadn't immediately called the other PCs trash, and subtly tried to drown them as she helped them to shore. This wasn't the same helpful NPC we had met in the other campaign, and it continued to go downhill from here. Our first plot hook came when we encountered patrolling guards who saw the Nereid save our characters. Seeing this powerful sea spirit, they dropped to their knees in worship and begged for her aid. Their capital had been sacked by enemy forces, and their pleas to the sea gods had been ignored. Until the Nereid arrived. Surely her presence was a sign that they had been heard. They begged for her to return with them to help bolster the morale of the war camp they had built, and bring back hope to their people. And they reassured the rest of us that if we helped reclaim the capital, then they would give us powerful boons in return. The Nereid, seeing the guards' heartfelt devotion and pleas for aid, called them trash and returned back to the ocean. All of us, in and out of game, were confused. You're just leaving, just like that? We asked. Yeah, I'm not interested in helping stupid land dwellers with their problems, Alana said. The rest of us tell Alana we are going to follow the guards, and Alana just scoffs and tells us to do whatever we want. And thus ended the first session. My girlfriend messaged Alana privately to ask if she understood that she was walking away from the story, and Alana said that she did. So, my girlfriend said that they would need to make a new character if the Nereid wasn't going to be involved. But she is, you just need to convince her. Alana said. People falling on their knees, believing you're a powerful ocean spirit who can save them, and begging you for help wasn't enough? My girlfriend asked. It was not. Session 2. Alana was upset that the rest of the PCs were going to the camp without her character and how we should have convinced her character to join them, and now she has nothing to do. We remind her that she chose to leave, and Alana wasn't happy about this, which she never is. While I was trying to RP with the others, Alana was messaging me about how horrible it was that we were level 1, and that we have no special gear, and how she let us start at level 5 in her campaign. Why is my girlfriend being so unfair? Why do the rest of us not care if she's being left out? My girlfriend was confused and hurt that Alana was acting like this. So I tried to step in and explain all the reasons why a complete group of strangers wouldn't care if her character just left. We've been RPing for years. She should know this. Still, Alana was upset. Then, Session 3. Our characters returned to the beach on a mission. And, what do you know, the Nereid was there too. After sitting out the last session, Alana decided to actually participate with the rest of us, but it quickly became apparent that Alana shouldn't be playing a druid. She said that she was willing to make a healing support, so I didn't have to for once. But when it came to our first actual fight involving her character, Rather than using magic or wild shaping, she would instead use her staff to hit people for 1d4 damage. She had cantrips that could hit harder. She could use shillelagh to hit harder with her staff. I gently reminded her of this, and she retorted with, I'm an Ariad. I only use water-based spells. So she was choosing a class where she would only be able to use one elemental type of magic whose spells they couldn't use until they were 5th level, and we were level 1. She wouldn't even take Cure Wounds because it wasn't thematic. After the fight, she found a dagger that she tied to the end of her staff so she could do more damage. So now, instead of 1d4 damage with her stick, she could now do 1d4 damage with her stick, or the dagger. My girlfriend allowed it at this point because she was tired of dealing with Alana. So, now we have a druid that wants to be a monk slash fighter that has a butcher knife tied to her staff. My girlfriend created a list of druid spells that could be flavored to be water-based, but Alana wouldn't have it. And now, tad insult to injury. As my drow was using her dark vision to explore the cave and loot things while the other PCs took short rests, 
The Nereid got pissed that the drow didn't care about our friends and how they were bleeding on the ground. Never mind that my character had no healing skills. Gee, it's almost like the person who said that she would be a healer should do the healing. Also, our friends? You called us trash and then left. We don't even know you, and you don't even introduce yourself for another full session. After an argument between my drow and the Nereid, we get back to the camp, where we meet an NPC Minotaur cleric that needed help. The same group that was attacking the capital also has attacked this Minotaur's temple, and she came looking for help. At this point, I'm intentionally fighting against racial stereotypes because my drow was uncomfortably aware that she was the only drow within a hundred miles of this camp. She helped the Minotaur convince the other PCs to help her after the Minotaur had her own experience dealing with racism towards her. And here is where things got very, very uncomfortable. Very quickly. Drick, our sorcerer, started making sexual comments about the Minotaur. You see, Drick was a kinky jerk, and he let everyone know this. He had been lusting after Alana for years, and she tolerated it because she was afraid to have no friends. But the only thing that could beat his lust for Alana was his furry kink. And thus, while the Minotaur and Maitrao were bonding over being outsiders and the racism that they've been dealing with, in walks the horny halfling. You know... I've always loved warm milk, Trick said in the grossest mockery of a seduction I've ever heard. I can hear the record scratch as everything just stopped. I physically had to get up and leave my computer, and my girlfriend messaged me with a flurry of what the heck, as what Drick just said sunk in. She was at a loss, I was at a loss, and I wanted to bleach my eyeballs. Drick had a history of saying gross sexual things, and we knew he had no filter, but we put up with it because he was friends with Alana. My girlfriend was ready to set her router on fire, because the thought of Drick flirting in character with this NPC was too much. And I can't blame her. But it then got worse. Then the Nereid rolled up, and she also started flirting with the Minotaur, because suddenly, not everything on the land was trash. But the Nereid and my character aren't getting along at all, and the Minotaur immediately picked up on how they were snipping at each other. But since my character was the one that actually was kind towards the Minotaur, she decided to avoid the weird halfling and the fishwoman and stick by the drow side. So we departed to go to the Minotaur's temple. Along the way, we encountered people taking advantage of the country's chaos. Bandits sacking villages, setting them on fire, and the wild creatures going wild as no one was keeping them in check. The Nereid didn't want to help them, even when it's within her own skill set. A village on fire? Why use control water to put out the fire? It's not her problem. The animosity between my drow and the Nereid grew. The Nereid straight up told the Minotaur that she wanted to stab my drow, and things were deteriorating. I had been sleeping on the red flags Alana was throwing out, as I realized that I now had a bed made by ignoring them. A few days out from the temple, we were attacked again, this time by a troll. The Minotaur went down in battle as she had been acting as our tank, and everyone was rolling bad. But, credit where credit is due, the Nereid had dragged her out of danger. But when my drow asked if she had any healing spells, the Nereid said no. So much for being a healer. Drick, the ever-helpful furry lusting after the Minotaur, was quick to hand over a healing potion to my drow. The Nereid that had been, up until this point in the session, been trying to awkwardly flirt with the Minotaur, started trying to stab the Minotaur with her knife to make sure she was dead. And upon seeing my drow attempt to give the Minotaur a potion, the Nereid attempted to slap it out of their hands. Stop! Don't pour it down her throat while she's unconscious. Do you want to choke her? My drow glared at her as she was slowly giving the potion to the Minotaur. Unconscious people can still drink, spirit. Alana starts losing it out of character. If you're going to make me play the healer, I'm going to think of everything. 
You can't just get rid of a conscious person liquid, especially if they've had a neck injury. She doesn't have a neck injury, my girlfriend pointed out. Well, how do we know that? You saw her go down, and I only told you several sessions ago that unconscious people can drink healing potions. Well, are you rolling choke chants? There is no such thing as a choke chance. If there was a risk, I would say something. But the drow has experience giving people potions anyway. Alana huffed. Well, how was I supposed to know that? The other characters proceeded to ignore the Nereid, who is now throwing a tantrum over getting people hurt with our negligence. Right as the Minotaur wakes up. At this point, Alana started throwing a tantrum because people were continuing to roleplay and ignoring her. With an imperious... Well, I'm not having any fun, and no one is listening to me, so I'm done. She logged off for the night. Everyone sighed, and we said goodnight because everyone needed to cool off. And my girlfriend and I talked about what to do next. My girlfriend wasn't having fun anymore, and everyone was on edge because of Alana's tantrum. And Drick was continuing to make us uncomfortable with his attitude. After a while, my girlfriend decided to keep going because Aaron, our last player, had been a good sport so far and had been having fun. And so we wanted to keep the game fun for them. Of course, it really fell apart when we finally got to the temple. We had taken a multi-week break while we cooled off from the previous fight. Outside of the temple, we were attacked again by the cultists that had taken over the temple. One cultist managed to fire off a fireball, setting the steamwork machine we were using to get around on fire. The Nereid ignored my pleas to use any of her water spells to put it out. She ignored me, and our ride exploded. We were now going to have to walk over 200 miles back to camp once we dealt with the temple. Alana didn't care. It wasn't her fault. And all I saw was red. By the time our characters actually got into the temple, Drick had been kicked out of the group after sexually harassing me, Alana, and my girlfriend out of character and being homophobic. So his character at this point was just being puppeted by my girlfriend until we got out of the temple. We made our way through the temple, with the Nereid going out of her way to try and push the drow into traps or into the front of the battle. The Minotaur, tired of the animosity, ended up trying to help. The real disaster happened when the Minotaur went down again. My character was hidden in the rafters of the temple, waiting to drop down and attack the cultists. She had no healing potions on her, and the Minotaur had just gone down. The Nereid had been given some of the healing potions because she was the healer. So when the Minotaur went down, we had two choices. Either my character could try to finish off the group of baddies that just took down the Minotaur, or she could use her turn to get the Minotaur back up with no medicine proficiency and no healing potions. Immediately after me was the Nereid, and the Minotaur had already failed a death saving throw. Heal the Minotaur, I told Alana. Alana huffed. You do it. You know all about healing potions, after all. And again, all I saw was red. I don't have any potions left. You have all of them. And you're the healer. And you're right next to her. If I don't distract the cultist, we're all going down. Well, maybe we should. Alana said. This game is stupid anyway. I was less than pleased. Aaron had spent the last two sessions quietly trying to avoid the brewing drama. And my girlfriend was in agony. At that point, I decided that, even though I really liked the Minotaur, it didn't make sense for us to TPK trying to get an NPC up. So I pleaded with Alana again. Please, get her up! And I broke stealth and rolled my sneak attack, trying to get the cultists to focus on me. Alana didn't get the Minotaur up. Oh no. Instead, she decided to use her stupid knife stick to inflict 1d4 damage. She wouldn't even use one single spell. Do you want to use a bonus action? My girlfriend asked, exhaustion in her voice. I don't have any. Alana said in annoyance. She never had any bonus actions. Why would she? And do you know what happened, dear reader? The Minotaur was hit by the cultists again. And she was downed, so it was an autocrit. 
and she died, right next to the Nereid. And Alana just said to me, Well, it's not my fault. At this point, I couldn't do it anymore. I rolled my dice, and I stopped RPing. My only goal was to finish this stupid temple, so I could tell my girlfriend I love her, and appreciate her, and her DMing, but we needed to get better friends. And to add insult to injury, the Nereid was a Circle of Dreams druid. And for those of you who don't know, your very first circle spell is a spell that lets you use a pool of d6s up to half your druid level to heal as a bonus action. So, to sum up, for eight sessions, Alana apparently had no idea that she had a heal spell built into her character. Every time she was asked if she wanted to use a bonus action, and insisted that she didn't have one, was a lie. I didn't find this out until after the session, when I demanded to see her character sheet. Her response when I pointed this out? Well, how was I supposed to know? I don't know what a bonus action is. At that point, things were done. We were down a player, and we didn't want to deal with Alana's tantrums anymore. And no one was having fun anymore. Not even Aaron. Then, to add a red cherry to the Princess and the Pea-style mountain of red flags that had accumulated over this short campaign, Alana started attacking my girlfriend because she forgot to tell Aaron that a session had been cancelled a couple of weeks prior. This was clearly a sign that my girlfriend didn't care about her friends, and that Alana, when she was the DM, would never have forgotten to tell us that a session wasn't happening. But she did. Multiple times. But we forgave her. Go figure. We never picked up the game after that, and the group ended up disbanding completely after Alana went on a smear campaign against both of us for having the audacity to be upset at her poor behavior and our poor treatment of Aaron. We just cut ties and moved on. Some say that you can still hear Alana going off about how it isn't her fault that she never learned her own class, even after playing it every week for two months. And as for my girlfriend and I, well, we found a new group. We're much happier, and we still joke about how, no matter how bad some people we play with can get, it will never be as bad as that time we had a druid that wanted to be a fighter and never once actually used a druid ability. But in any case, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you have a story that you'd like me to narrate, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.